Hi, I'm Eddie of Eddie's Reef Aquaria. Today's video, I'm going to dedicate it to dino flaglets. Last week, if you follow me, I talked about cyanobacteria, which is what I actually thought I had on the tank. But upon observation on the coloration of the organism on the sand, what I actually have is dinos. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to talk about it, uh, what it actually is, how to combat it. And at the end of the video, I went ahead and I changed salts and I'm going to tell you all out there my first impression when it comes to the Tropic Marin uh, Pro Sea Salt. I went ahead, I started to use it and I thought I relate again like I said my first impression of it. So hold on one second. Okay and here we are in front of the tank focusing on the substrate. So more or less you can get a picture, an idea of what it looks like. Okay the first question is what is actually dino flagellates? Well, the research that I did is that dino flagellates are microscopic single cell organisms that are photosynthetic and very widespread in nature. You can find them anywhere. Now, when it comes to dino flagellates, they can look a lot like cyanobacteria, which is what I actually thought when I did my last week's video. That's what I actually thought that I had. Now the most common color for dinos is a shade of brown which is what I have here. But they are also commonly found in a pale brown to off white or yellow color as well as a few different shades of green. Now when I look at my substrate what I have is like a not a dark brown, but like a pale brown type of coloring. And I do have different spots of green. So by what I'm reading here and the research that I did to, for all of you out there, I really don't have cyano. What I have is dinos. Now they will start to coat inside your aquariums as well as or coating the aquarium glass. This coating will look like slime, it is also common to see gas bubbles trapped by it and even a stingy appearance as the gas bubbles try to escape. Now that's basically what it actually is. Now we're going to go briefly to how to actually get rid of dinos, being that it's a, a stronger strain, shall we call it, of bacteria. Now this, is, this goes through with cyano. Number one, you, you should lower your nutrient import levels for both your fish and your corals. So like if you were feeding daily or, or if you were um, feeding the corals a lot of nutrients cut back, uh, which is what I've done when it comes to feeding my fish, which I only have two at the present time. I'm planning on getting more, but with this issue, I've halted back on buying more stock, more fish and or corals. So like I said last week, but I'll also say it for this video, which has got to do with dinos. I was feeding the fish every day, like Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, I would feed it PE pellets. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and sometimes on the weekends, I would feed him frozen foods. Well, I stopped that. So what I'm feeding now is just uh, PE pellets on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And recently, I did a couple of water changes, and I checked my parameters, and my phosphates is down to zero, and my nitrates that were on 10, they're down to two. Now, another thing that you can try when it comes to dyno is to siphon as much out as you can frequently, like when you do uh, water changes. Now, one thing, and this is very important, do not, and I repeat, do not do many water changes as when doing so it will add the trace elements and minerals back to your water in which dinos would feed on. So you have to cut back. Uh, what I've done is I used to do water changes on a monthly basis. 
Then I went down to three weeks and I went down to two. Now, because dino, uh, they're also photosynthetic, but they also feed on nutrients. So cut back on your nutrients, like I briefly mentioned shortly. And also when it comes to water changes, cut back on the water changes. Now, once this is over, then I'll probably go back to the, the two or three week water changes. But for now, I should not. And again, I should not uh, do water changes. So actually to starve it and not to actually give it food. Uh, you know, go ahead and give it all these trace elements upon doing a water change. One thing that also complies with the cyano, if you saw my last week's video, is you must lower your lights, especially if you have controllable lights. I happen to have a Radeon XR15 Pro, fourth generation. In my case, I can lower them. So what you should do is, since it also, like I mentioned previously, is it is uh, it all depends on photosynthetic and on nutrients. So lower your lights now. What you should lower is your whites, your greens, and your reds, which is the same thing that holds true for cyano. You should keep them down. What I have them now is at four percent. If you look at my last week's video, I did a screenshot of how uh, my template looks and you'll notice that my two whites are at four green is at four and the red is also at four now uh, the same product that i'm using for cyano the same product you use for dinos which is the brightwell aquatics microbacter clean this is a bacteria like a my uh, microbacter 7 is the same thing but it has other components to help actually clean the rocks, the substrate. So continue using the Microbacter Clean, which is uh, I have found that it's very, very beneficial. A matter of fact, I made a phone call yesterday to Brightwell, and I talked to one of the experts there that has 25 years of experience and with uh, not only the chemistry of this, but working with and at Brightwell Aquatics. And he told me that to actually uh, dose it a little more. Now, uh, one thing that I did on another research and I made some phone calls is how long is it going to take? Well, what I came up with, the answers that I came up with when I asked that question is the same time it took to acquire dinoflagellants or also cyanobacteria that's more or less the same time it's going to take to eliminate it so you have to be patient it's not like chemiclean that you put it in 48 hours is gone that's a chemical and really you should leave that as a last resort so whatever time it took me to notice it and start to populate more or less it's going to take the same time more or less to eliminate it and then uh one other thing that I thought I mentioned that I did research, if you want to get rid of it quick, there's another remedy. It's going to cost you a little more money, but go ahead and add a UV sterilizer because the UV sterilizers is actually to sterilize the water to eliminate any type of bacteria that you might have in the tank. Now, I personally, and this is me, this is the disclaimer when it comes to what I'm talking about today and last week when it came to the cyanobacteria. This is me. This is the, shall we call it, the method that I'm using to get rid of it. There's other methods, there's other ways of doing this, but this is me and me alone, the way I'm trying to battle this. Uh, going back, I'm saying this because going back to UV sterilizers. UV sterilizers, in this case, it'll eliminate it quickly. It will kill all, now I'm talking about in capital letters, all. It will kill all the bacteria in your tank. So that will kill and eliminate cyano and dino. But here's the, the trick question, bacteria. When you have a reef and you want to keep a reef and corals, uh, whether it's mixed or LPS dominant or SPS dominant, you need beneficial bacteria to colonize in your rocks, in your substrate, if you social, you know, if you decide to go with a substrate and not bare bottom. So you need bacteria in the tank 
to colonize the beneficial bacteria. So that'll help with the growth in all of the corals. So if you constantly use a UV sterilizer, I mean, if you put it on permanently, that will um, hamper your all bacteria, which also would hamper your good beneficial bacteria. So what I would say when it comes to the topic of UV sterilizer, if you want to go that route and do a quick fix, you can go ahead and get a UV sterilizer and run it uh, for, let's say, a period of time, like a week or so. But once you're sure and you're confident that the cyano or the dino is gone, I personally, and again, this is me, me alone, I would go ahead and stop using the UV sterilizer so you can maintain a certain population of your beneficial bacteria. Okay, and there you have it. I hope you found the video interesting and educational. But before I go, as I mentioned on the outro, I would uh, talk a little bit about this salt. Well, uh, let me tell you, I'm impressed. Uh, I've used uh, Red Sea Pro for many, many years. As a matter of fact, when I started my uh, nine gallon nano in 2016, I've been using Red Sea Pro. I did, as you all of you know me out there, Eddie the researcher. I do a lot of research and I found that that was the top of the line salt, at least for me. I know there's, out, there's tons of uh, salts out there, reef crystals, on and on and on. Um, but I decided to go with that salt. And now, um, as you must be aware, in any industry, it doesn't have to be in this hobby, things evolve and new products come out, new researches, new techniques, um, on and on and on, etc., etc. So I started to hear a little bit about this salt. So I went ahead and I tried it. And my first impression, I haven't done a detailed video on it yet. But at least I will tell you that comparing to the Red Sea Pro, and again, I'm not knocking out Red Sea Pro, it's an excellent salt. Uh, but I did find that on this one, when I mixed it, it mixed actually quicker. It actually mixed quicker than the Red Sea Pro. And when it comes to the parameters, uh, this salt is not as bombarded uh, as the Red Sea Pro. Because the Red Sea Pro, if you go into the website, it is from the Red Sea. And what they do is they have like um, the blue bucket, uh, the Red Sea salt, and then you have the, the Pro, which is the one that I've been using since 2016, the black bucket. And the black bucket one, the Pro, that one I found out that they inject it. They, they make it more for reefs. So what happens is they inject it with uh, higher levels of DKH, of uh, magnesium, and certain trace elements, they inject it more. So uh, when, it hum when it comes to that salt, to the Red Sea Pro that I've been using for quite a few years, you really don't have to dose. As a matter of fact, down here on the furniture, on the tank, I have two unopened uh, bionic uh, parts A and B that I bought and I haven't found the need to uh, dose either alkalinity or calcium because they, they're way up there. And my uh, mag is usually at 1500 or 1480, 1470. And that's because of the Red Sea Pro, they inject it. They inject certain trace elements, DKH and calcium to comply to reef keeping. And then the blue bucket, uh, if you look at it, on the internet, or if you look at the actual ba uh, bucket, the ingredients, uh, it's not injected as much because it's geared more for fish and not for a uh, mixed uh, reef or LPS or SPS dominated tank. But this one isn't. The uh, Tropic Marin is a pharmaceutical grade, which is a higher end salt than Red Sea uh, Pro. So I'm considering this a higher end, it's pharmaceutical, and it's not injected more, uh, like I'm mentioning previously, uh, to gear it for uh, corals. It is a salt for, quote unquote, for corals, for coral keeping. So again, my first impression, it mixes uh, very, very quickly. It's a pharmaceutical grade. It's a high-end salt. And I've done already tests. As a matter of fact, uh, because of this issue, 
I went ahead and I did a couple of water changes. I did uh, two water changes and then I went ahead and I did my uh, testing, which I do it weekly, either Thursday, Fridays, or Saturday. And I did find that my DKH went down a little bit because again, it's not injected as the Red Sea is. And I found that my mag uh, was around 1500. So that's more or less the uh, same. But the pH actually went up with this salt. Uh, with the Red Sea Pro, I've noticed that there's no way that I can bring up my pH higher than 8.0. And yet with this one, I've noticed, and this is again a water change. Now I've done two. So I would say that the tank still has remnants of the Red Sea Pro. Not as much, but I'd say like, I would safely say that what, like 80% uh, of the water here, it's already Tropic Marin, not Red Sea Pro. But I did find that my pH is higher. It's uh, instead of 8.0, it was at 8.1, 8.1-ish around there. So that's my first impression of the salt. I'm going to continue to check it out and use it on my water changes and see uh, what happens. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up, the like button, and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And next to the subscription, there's a little bell. That's the notification bell. So if you hit that, every time I upload a video, you'll be the first ones to be notified that Eddie's Reef of Korea uploaded a video. And like I say at the end of all of my videos, happy reefing. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and have a great, great, fantastic day. Bye-bye.